Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to this week's tutorial. Uh, this week we're going to take a look at using the explosion modifier and generating a explosion effect. Um, we're not going to be looking at the actual um, sort of fireball of an explosion or anything like that, just sort of the uh, physical rubble that's uh, generated by an explosion. Um, but we're also going to make use of the masonry add-on to come up with a wall to uh, explode. So uh, if you haven't already got that, um, just go to uh, this website here. This is the uh, Blender Wiki and it's in the extensions area. Um, so yeah, that's the actual URL to the masonry add-on that you can uh, download. I believe that's the download link there. Um, and if you're still sort of new to all this, uh, you can go here uh, just go to that address there. Let's pause this video to type that out or something. Um, that will show you how to uh, install the add-on onto your uh, computer and make use of it. So back into Blender. So first um, I'll go into add-ons and it's under add mesh masonry so just enable that. Don't worry about that little warning signal. That's just to say that it's not a completely uh, complete add-on. So I'm going to get rid of that default cube, add in a plane. My cursor is off center, so I'll just alt G that. I'll actually put my cursor back to the center. Um, then in edit mode I'll just scale this all the way up so I've got a nice big area for the effect to happen onto. And then again shift A, add mesh, and then under masonry Add in a wall, and we'll create this great big wall here, and then just over here, I'll make this a bit bigger to see what's going on. Um, I'm just gonna move this, uh, create a nice big wall. Lots of very, uh, don't need to worry about any openings or anything like that, um, and I'll just Turn the thickness of the ground all the way down so that it's fairly sort of close to each other. Um, it looks alright. That looks okay. Um, so we'll just change the can we change the depth of the wall. Yeah, there we go. Make that nice and sort of about the width of the brick. Um, so yeah, masonry is quite a nice quick way to bring in a wall that you need. Um, so what we'll do now the plan for this effect is to have a sphere or like a cannonball that's going to come through and just bash through the wall and then um, sort of leave it a hole in the wall, um, which is something that you can quite easily do with Blender. So tab into edit mode um, for the wall and then I'm just going to go into wireframe and I'll hit C and that gives me a circle select and I can just scroll up and sort of come up with a about the size of the hole in the wall that I want uh, using my scroll wheel so I'm going to do that and select that there and that's selected on both sides um, and what's kind of cool is that because it's sort of a wall like that, you uh, get a fairly uneven edge around there, so that looks quite cool. Now, in the object data uh, area here, add in a vertex group, and we'll just call it group hole, and assign the selected vertices to that. So now uh, we can tell the explosion modifier just to look at that. First thing we need to do is actually add in a particle effect to the wall because the explosion uh, modifier generates the pieces of rubble and stuff uh, from the particles and generates the motion of them from the particles as well. So. At the moment we've just got some particles going down like that. 
that's a bit boring. Uh, what we can do is if we go to say the side view. Um, so we want the I think, we want the cannonball to come through like this. So I'll go from the top here. Um, so we'll just that's the uh, the green is the y axis. So I'll start cranking up the y on the emitter object, and you can see it's now shooting out in that direction, which is good. So you can imagine the uh, explosion coming through like that. Um, might add in a bit of normal just to give it a bit more forward strength. And there's already gravity on the um, effect under uh, field weights and gravity's on, which is fine, that's what we want. Um, now I'm probably going to want to make this a bit bigger just to make sure all the particles are caught by it and we'll go into the physics panel here and turn on collision and just turn up damping and friction to about 0.5 it doesn't have to be perfectly right um, you can see there the particles moving um, and you may want to turn up damping a bit more um, and I will just turn off the player, and if I can, oh, because I'm in edit mode, uh, select this, and I'll just start modifying this, so I'll turn up the life of all the particles just all the way up, because we don't want the rubble to disappear after everything, um, so as they're coming along, they're all just sort of spinning out like that. And we'll put the start to 50 and the end to 55, so there's just five frames where the explosion actually occurs. That's fine. Um, you can play with the rotation, we'll worry about that. Uh, we'll worry about all the rest of this after we've got the explosion going, so go to the modifier with the all selected you see the particle system modifier is already in there uh, we can bring in an explode modifier and uh, simulate and at the moment it's just destroying the entire wall so we'll bring in the vertex group hole and hit refresh that's a very important button so at the moment it's uh, working opposite to what we want. It's blowing up the entire wall minus the hole. So we turn protect all the way up to one. I believe that should inverse that effect. Uh, make sure you hit refresh. No, it's not. Okay, uh, easy way to fix that. Is so I'll go back into edit mode and the selection from before is still there. Um, if it's not, just select the vertex group and hit select. Then hit remove from the vertex group and hit control I to select the inverse and assign that to the vertex group now. So it's the opposite from before. And then we'll go back to here, hit refresh, and that should now. Yeah, that makes more sense that it's protecting this part of the wall rather than that part. Um, and we... Yep, there we go. So, now we've got that going on. Uh, there's a bit of extra rotation that's a bit screwy at the end. Uh, I found the best way to get rid of that is to turn it to random, I think. So, there's still sort of rotation going on, but it doesn't uh, screw around um, or spin according to the velocity, which is what's happening right at the end there. It's still sort of reading out there's a bit of velocity, so we'll keep spinning. Um, so is that. Uh, what I like to do is, so back in edit mode here, I'll just go to control I to select 
this hole again and I'm just going W and subdivide W and subdivide again so now there's a lot more geometry for the effect to take place on so yeah now there's lots of uh, geometry and stuff for the uh, explosion effect to work on so if we hit Alt A to play let's see there's generally smaller chunks and stuff around which is quite cool um, we can also increase the amount of particles uh, I might make, try and make that 5000 and that will make the chunks of debris smaller again so there's more chunks um, I generally find it's nicer to also in the modifiers bring in a solidify um, and this can sort of just add some thickness to all these polygons because at the moment it's just the actual polygons themselves have been sort of separated from everything and that's all there is so we can add some thickness I'll turn the offset to zero and then just add some thickness generally the positive I think is the best way to go uh, but you can just sort of see that's added some thickness here however it might be the wrong way um, yeah it's hard to there we go so it's not perfect but even thickness generally helps um, just sort of get it so that it's got a bit of thickness but doesn't look all screwy on the inside so now we've got some nice chunky bits of debris rather than just flat pulling on which is nice um, I think that's pretty much all the effect actually there's not a lot to it it's a fairly easy thing to do um, if you want to increase the speed of the effect uh, time step here under physics I think the one that I was playing with just now I had it at about 0.2 and that sort of just everything happens a bit faster um, so it doesn't look like it's sort of floating through the air of course you could turn that all the way down to say 0.01 and then so you got like a slow motion explosion effect sort of rotate the camera around sort of matrix style <coughs> excuse me that could be quite cool if that's what sort of effect that you want uh, but for just real time about 0.2 maybe 0.25 should be so yeah we've just got this boom explosion thing coming out now so everything's going up we no, the explosion starts at 50 so say there's been a cannonball fired at this wall out of a great big bang pirate ship I'll add in a sphere um, and I'll just leave it as sort of the default values and have it so it's right in position for when that hits the wall um, and I'll move it back I'll move it back quite far so that it's got lots of speed by the time it gets to the wall I'll add in a location key there and say at 100 I'll move it to about the same spot on the opposite side add another location key and then go to frame 50 and hopefully yeah, it's almost at the wall so I'll just fudge it a bit and put it against the wall there so that as it goes through it just blasts through like that um, you can also always add in some extra effect to the cannonball and make it bounce around all that you want if you need to um, but for this this is just fine for this tutorial so if I just go like that you can see boom 
so that, that can look quite cool quite easily. Um, so the effect, the ball, they're separate but you can tie them together to look pretty good. Um, I want to... oh no that looks okay. There's not an actual circle hole straight through the middle at the start but it only takes five frames for the whole thing to be pulled away so you don't need to worry too much um, unless you are doing sort of a spectacular close-up then you may want uh, a couple of separate explosion modifiers with different vertex groups on the protect uh, value so that's pretty much the entire effect um, you can add texture to the wall and stuff Everything's actually, it's, I think it's a bit large in scale, because uh, you can see this camera's tiny compared to everything else. So if I was to sort of view that through the camera, I might make it sort of follow the ball and then just go through that, or you can just have it like that. Whatever you like. So yeah, hopefully you found this to be useful. Um, please let me see any... Uh, results you come up with, uh, blowing up, you can blow up buildings, you can blow up trees, you can blow up anything you like with this. Uh, but it's great because you can blow up just a portion of the mesh, uh, which I know in other software packages you have to sort of duplicate that exact portion and then only explode that portion, blah blah blah. Because Blender has vertex groups you can just easily do it like that. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this useful. Uh, let me know if there's any tutorial requests you've got. Uh, I'll do my best to get onto them. Um, and until next time, good luck and have fun.